America's on the move, but will Democrats move with them? I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle Now. And Bill, the U.S. Census is out with some new figures that show some state-to-state -state migration that is happening. And let me just give you the short list. Um, people are moving out of New York, California, Michigan, what? and Illinois. And people are, Why? Moving, <laughs> people are moving into Texas, Florida, Arizona, Utah, I think Idaho. There may be a couple of others. Uh, states like that. As in, it, it turns out, Bill, that there is a strong correlation between lower taxes and lower regulation and this outflow from the high tax, high tax, high regulation states and inflow to the lower tax, lower regulation states. Uh, Bill, I know this seems like a mystery to you, but what do you make of this? Are you saying that people are leaving states with high taxation to go to states with low taxation? Go figure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure he's all right. We will have him in the concussion tent oh, doing a God. full workup. You gotta, and you got to give a guy a warning, Scott, when you're going to drop something like that on him. It's a truth I mean, bomb. I, I have to admit, I it's a truth know, bomb. I know. It's a truth bomb. Blew me halfway across the room. <laughs> no, it's another mystery. I can't figure it out. And and here's the here's the tragedy of this obvious lesson. And by the way, when I say obvious lesson, this lesson is at least as obvious as the lesson that Venezuela makes you prosperous. Just, I mean, uh, socialism makes you prosperous. Just go down to, to Venezuela and, and look at all the prosperity that's generated by socialism. Equally obvious to anybody except for progressives is the idea that if you tax people more, they will move to a place where they tax them left. And people who are smart in politics will lower their tax rate so that they can make more money for the government. Rick Perry spent more time in California when he was a governor than he did in Texas, and I admire him enormously for it. He took so many businesses out of California, but there's one problem with this, and this is what I get back to with the stupidity thing. This is the consistent problem, and it's enough to make you really, really tear your hair out, and that is, take Californians, for example. Ridiculously high taxes, ridiculously high personal income tax, high sales tax, high property taxes, all of these regulations, it's impossible to do business out here. And I'm living proof of that. Um, <laughs> and, and so people who vote for these policies decide that these policies are ruining their lives. Then they go someplace sensible. And here's the tragedy. When they get to that sensible place, they start voting like Californians. It's no wonder that Californians are, are just so widely despised. I remember there was a, and, and this is like from the 80s or 90s, you know, uh, there was a, a, a bumper sticker in the state north of us that said, don't Californicate Oregon. Uh, and, um, and, you know, what do you say? I just don't know what you say when you uproot your business, your family, everything, you move from California to Texas in order to get away from the high taxes. And the first thing you do when you get your, uh, your ability to vote in Texas is to vote for high taxes. It's an utter mystery to me. I, it, it, it is some evidence that, that, that this kind of progressivism is a mental disease. I will say, uh, and a little sort of report uh, from Boots on the Ground here, that as a retail salesperson um, it, who's seeing a lot of these Californians who are moving into North Texas, um, I'm trying to think of a situation where I was dealing with a couple who had just moved from California and I told them the price of the furniture and they flinched. It, it doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Uh, I went to, and again, this is old news. I went uh, from California to Florida in 1993. I, I'd grown up in Florida. I did four or five years in California. Went back in 1993. Went down to Oaks Mall in Gainesville, Florida. And there was an open kind of a kiosk, uh, a real estate kiosk. And I'm looking at the numbers on what they wanted for these houses. And I said, they left a zero off of all of these things. At least one zero, maybe two. You can't... You know, it's, it's Glenn Reynolds uh, really, really nailed something so simple and so beautiful when he said that, you know, that which cannot continue will not continue. Um, if if the people leaving California and going to places like North Texas were going slowly enough and there were and there were few enough of them, then the freedom would soon overwhelm their their puny senses and uh, and, and they, they'd wake up to a to a brand new morning. But when enough of them come in one place at one time, you end up with Austin. And as I said to Governor Perry, uh, back when he was governor, uh, I would take whatever uh, resources, concrete, barbed wire, and everything that you've allocated for the border with Mexico, and I'd build a fence around Austin. And, and, and I wouldn't let anybody out. Um, 
Scott, this kind of, there's a serious, real serious side to this. In World War II, at the beginning of World War II, for the first six months, the Japanese just swept everything. They, they simply just rolled across the Pacific. The United States couldn't stop them. Britain couldn't stop them. The Dutch couldn't stop them. They just swept for six months out of the war at the beginning of the war. And then they got so complacent and they got so confident, overconfident, that they had a name for it. And the name was victory disease. And victory disease cost the Japanese the war. And we have something like that in places like California. It's called prosperity disease. And what it is, is it is an assumption that all of the hard work and all of the ethics and all of the laws and regulations that created prosperity in the first place can now be completely inverted for our own personal gain and satisfaction and moral happiness without consequences. It's, Bill, pros this, it's prosperity disease. This uh, report that I'm uh, quoting here comes from thehill.com. And one of the things they noted was that this um, outward migration from places like New York State um, is bound to continue in the wake of the new tax law that took an effect in 2018 that allows um, taxpayers in New York to deduct much less of their state and local tax burden. The governor of New York, uh, Governor Cuomo, has found that in this year's budget, he's coming up $2.3 billion short. Mm. And the combination of tens of thousands of people moving out of New York State and likely tens of thousands more uh, threatens his state government with implosion. Uh, don't you think that at least at the federal level, we have some obligation to stem this migration, <laughs> uh, if only to save the states like Texas that are taking the inflow? Yes, I think absolutely, Scott. I think the people of Texas who've been living in freedom and prosperity in the middle of this giant blue state model meltdown, I think that the people of Texas and, and Utah and, and, and places like that definitely need to dig deep into their wallets and come up with extra money that could be going to, I don't know, expanding their house or a world vacation or educating their kids or something like that. I think they need to dig into their personal savings and send the money to exceedingly wealthy, exceedingly stupid people in New York and California to make sure that they don't have to leave the cesspool that they created on their own, uh, using their own imaginations and their own policies. Absolutely. I think, I think all people who work hard have a moral obligation to protect these multimillionaires from themselves and frankly if it costs a few cases of malnutrition in, in, a, in a Texas ranch what what price is that when you can compare it to the look on Suri Cruz's face when uh, you know when she finds that that the um, that the kale is is just the prices of kale are just going through the ceiling I mean I, I really think that you're, you're really right on the button here and and I'm frankly ashamed that that, that it hasn't happened already and yeah, the kale is so cheap in Texas we feed it to the cattle um, Bill, th this final uh, issue is probably... So, so, Calif so <laughs> you, you take Californians' food and feed it to your food. <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> oh, well, that's a good idea. <laughs> so uh, we always love a, uh, a Parks and Rec reference there. <laughs> um, Thank you, Ron Swanson. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is perhaps the political aspect of the show. We've just dealt with the economic aspect of the show. Bill, because of this out-migration from states like Illinois, California, New York, and Michigan, and inflow to places like Texas um, and Idaho and Utah uh, and Florida, it is going to affect the... Um, allocation of representatives in the U.S. House of Representatives. The former states are going to lose representatives. The latter states are going to gain representatives. Um, if anything, you can say what you want about Democrats, but they are shrewd when it comes to electoral politics. Bill, can't you see in the very near future Democrats, at least at the state level, advocating for lower taxes, if only to preserve their representation in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> Once you said, once you got to Democrats advocating lower taxes, that's I, I went into kind of an internal coma. I might have had a small stroke. Um, no, I didn't hear anything after that. Uh, look, this could be good news, and it's good news in a very simple way. Blue states are failing, red states are succeeding. When blue people go to a red state and increase the representation of the red state, that would be good if they become red people. But if they are in a blue state catastrophe and they're moving into a red state and they bring their numbers and representation with them, but they still stay blue, it's not only not good, it's a catastrophe. I mean, when an, when an idiot like, like Beto O'Rourke can get as close as he did to a rock-solid conservative like Ted Cruz in Texas, 
you had better start thinking very seriously about about what I said, and maybe instead of putting that that border wall in Texas around um, uh, Austin, if it were up to me, uh, and I was the governor of Texas, I think I would build the wall to where the greatest threat is, and that would be coming in from the west on Interstate 10. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, as you probably know, I've utterly failed over the last several years to recruit uh, Bill Whittle to get him to move to Texas. But we do consider ourselves virtually to be in Texas when we're doing this show. And this show is made possible by you, the members at BillWhittle.com. Um, if when I said you, I didn't refer to you, well, then you can become one of those by going to BillWhittle.com and clicking that Become a Member link. We are grateful. Can I, yes. can I add something? Please. Uh, you know, it, the we had a, a YouTube informed us that um, that they were going to make some adjustments to the algorithms uh, in terms of how many people see these. And I think our, our videos have gone down from being shared to 5% of the people who click the button down to about 2%. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is because even on the smallest one of these episodes, the, 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 the ones that perform the least, they are still seen by four times as many people as the people who actually pay for them. Even the very, very smallest ones, consistently we have an audience that's that's many times greater than the membership. And the only reason I want to throw this in is, is if you have the common sense to understand that there's no such thing as free health care because health care isn't free, well, there's no such thing as free political commentary either because these things cost money and they're doing everything they can to make sure it's as difficult for us as possible. So we really could use your support if you can give it to us and... and uh, and bless those of you that are already doing it. You're carrying an enormous burden on behalf of a, of a lot of people, and, and we'd like to share that load a little more. And I'll add to that, as the one who actually posts the videos on YouTube, we have uh, more frequently been getting that little warning sign that pops up and says that this uh, video cannot be monetized because it contains things that aren't suitable for the public. If you're you a regular... To, if, if, yeah, I'm sorry. I just okay. want to make this point as clear as I can. We've done everything we can uh, to make these messages available to as many people as possible. But when, but when the left is not only fighting in such a way that they don't want you to see these messages and they're succeeding at it, not only do our ad revenues go down, but our reach goes down. And, and, and to be perfectly honest with you, you have a choice and a decision to make. And that decision is, are you going to let these Silicon Valley bastards tell you what you can see or cannot see? And the only way to be sure that they don't is to pay us directly because they're doing everything they possibly can to make sure that any revenues that we might have legitimately made in the past are choked off. So if you want to cut out the middleman, you know how to there do it. Go. go to BillWhittle.com and click that Become a Member link. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Odd. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible.